Josh McDaniels to the Raiders. It's happening. It's happening. Uh, and now, obviously, I, I couldn't re- – I mean, it's still too early. So I couched it appropriately that the Raiders could be making a run at Josh McDaniels, even though no one at that point had made even a request to interview him. The Patriots are blown away by this. No one until the Raiders yesterday had made a request to interview Josh McDaniels. After what he's done over the last decade, he's been a head coach. I think folks in Denver would admit if you could – get them in a candid spot that they didn't give Josh McDaniels enough time there to really grow and develop and make his mistakes and become the guy he's eventually going to be as a head coach. But now here we are. And yes, it sure seems like at this point, it's going to be Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler from the Patriots as the GM. And it, it, it feels like McDaniels is going to be in charge just like he was in Denver. And people are going to say, well, it, it went to hell in a handbasket in Denver, but that was over 10 years ago. He's grown, he's matured, he's learned, he's developed. We all have over the past 10 years. And he's going to be a better finished product. And it kind of adds a little spice, Peter, that he's jumping back into the same division with the Denver Broncos. I don't know how I'd feel as a head coach about jumping into the division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert, but what the hell? McDaniels has has learned plenty from Bill Belichick, and it's going to make things very interesting to have him as the next coach of the Raiders if, if, because... We know from four years ago, it's not done until it's done. So I will not say it's going to happen until someone sends me a picture of the contract with his name, with the ink dried, with no PS, with no codicils, with no exceptions, but it sure feels like it's moving in this direction. You know, after Josh McDaniels left Denver in the, uh, you know, under the black cloud. I remember, uh, you know, somebody who knows Josh McDaniels very well said, you can take this to the bank, that Josh McDaniels will never take a coaching job in the NFL, ever, ever. Not that he will ever even be offered one, but if he's ever offered another coaching job in the NFL, the only thing he wants to know is, Do they have a quarterback? Because Josh McDaniels understands the way the NFL works. We just talked about it a minute ago. He understands the way the NFL works. If you can enter every Sunday with a competitive quarterback, and that's what Derek Carr is. He is a competitive quarterback. Now, I'm not going to say he's a top five quarterback because he isn't. But he's a competitive quarterback who can win games who can play great, often under pressure. And so I like Derek Carr, and I'm sure that all the jobs on the market this year, you know, when Josh McDaniels looked at every one, I'm sure he just said, hey, if that one opens up, even though it's a weird situation, and it is, that's a job, maybe the job, that he would be interested in. Now, I don't know about Jacksonville, Uh, I don't even know if Jacksonville uh, did a lot of due diligence or fact-finding on him. But the reason why this one is interesting, and yes, obviously, you've got to play Herbert and Mahomes four times a year. That's 23% of your schedule. That's hard. But as you can see, Mike, you know, uh, the Raiders have been a thorn in the side of good teams when their quarterback plays well. And that's why, in my opinion, I think this is a very intriguing job for for Josh McDaniels. And then on the other side, for Mark Davis, what does he want? To Mark Davis, I think this has a a little bit of his dad kind of tweaking the rest of the league and say, oh, you don't want to interview Josh McDaniels because he left the Colts at the altar? You don't want to interview Josh McDaniels because he imploded in Denver? I'll show you. I'm going to take Bill Belichick Jr. And I'm going to take his personnel guy. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to make Patriots West. Now, you know, again, that is a gross exaggeration. And I get it. But I think that Mark Davis wants to take some of the brain power and the offensive mind that Josh McDaniels is away from New England and that is going to be how he's going to build his team 
for the next four or five years. I don't really think it's that gross of an exaggeration. I could see Mark Davis thinking that exactly. Now, I don't know when Patriots West, South, East, or North, not that North is even possible, I don't know where that's worked. That's the problem. It hasn't worked very well. When you decide, for example, the Bob Quinn, Matt Patricia show in Detroit, that didn't work. Brian Flores in Miami, that didn't work. And, and the reason why it fails is because, this is one of the reasons. These guys who leave Bill Belichick after an extended period of time, even if they say, I'm going to do it my own way, I'm my own person, I'm my own coach, you've been around the guy for so long, you don't realize how much you're like him. You don't realize how many of his ways have crept into your ways. It happens by osmosis. And the challenge is, and this gets back to McDaniel's time in Denver, the people around you need to be patient while you are doing what needs to be done to infuse the Patriot way into a new organization because there are going to be people there who are set in their ways and they don't like it. They resent it. They don't like that the coach is kind of an ass. And guess what? Plenty of effective coaches are kind of an ass. And you have to have higher standards. You have to have a very hard-charging, full-blown commitment, grinding and grinding, attention to detail, the kinds of things that derailed the Cowboys in that fateful moment with 14 seconds left in the wild-card game against the 49ers. That's the kind of thing that a detail-oriented coaching staff doesn't let happen. So th that's the challenge. Mark Davis has to be patient to let it play out. And, you know, Peter, you said something about having a quarterback. Josh McDaniels had a quarterback when he got to Denver. He had Jay Cutler, and he got rid of him. First order of business. And it makes me wonder, what's he going to do with Derek Carr if he gets that gig? Does he get rid of Derek, Derek Carr? Carr is not Jay Cutler. Derek Carr is not Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler is a weird guy who uh, had, had basically... Well, he didn't know, you know he was weird, semi -worn, Dad. He, he had semi-worn out his welcome. He had semi-worn out his welcome. What had he won? And, and look, I, I mean, you know, I, I, will, I will make this point about McDaniels when he got to Denver, okay? And that, this, I think, is really, really important. When Josh McDaniels got to Denver, he determined, okay, that he was going to do things a certain way. And so he said, if I ever get a coaching job, this is what I'm going to do. And a bunch of the things he decided, but I'll give you one example. He brought his brother, Ben McDaniels, to be the quarterback coach, who basically became the Tebow uh, mentor, you know, every day and doing everything with him. And, and, and at one point, at one point, I'm sure that a lot of people in the building looked around and said, you know, Ben McDaniels is, has not done enough to be, to take this really important job with this team. I mean, and this is the classic case of NFL nepotism. Josh McDaniels shouldn't have done that. There was no doubt about it, but he felt like his brother was a really good coach and it wouldn't matter if he was and if he was a great coach what what mattered is the appearance of it and the appearance was lousy quite honestly and so i think that's one of the things at this point that uh, that this that that mcdaniel's has learned you know everything matters everything counts appearance counts i don't know who's going to be on his staff but i do think he learned a lot from being in denver that will transfer into this job in uh, in Vegas. If he gets it, I don't know if he's going to get it, but if he does get it. Well, and if he ultimately takes it, look, yeah. I don't think we've ever seen the definitive explanation about what went haywire four years ago when he had accepted the job. And I think this is one of the reasons why some teams are shying away from him because he, he violated the etiquette of yeah. this – this process that requires leaps of faith to be made. This is no different than if, for example, the Lions, the middle of March last year, had said to the Rams, I know that for the past six weeks we've operated under the impression that we're going to trade you Matthew Stafford once we actually can trade you Matthew Stafford, but 
you know, we've changed our mind. Sorry, Rams. That, that's the kind of thing that's hard to come back from. And that's where Mark Davis has to make the leap of faith that, that – and not, not that Josh McDaniels would say, I'm out after he says I'm in, but you have to be guarded against the possibility that something's going to cause Josh McDaniels before he says I'm in, because obviously at this point don't have to wait for him. He says I'm in, he signs the contract, it's done. But at some point short of that, he could change his mind. And whether it was a Patriots thing – that got him to stay in New England, whether it was a Colts-related thing, something happened with the Colts that caused him to say, I'm not coming here, I can't do this. You, you just don't know, and I don't know. And with Josh McDaniels, it's the epitome of it's truly not done until it's done because there could be something that goes down, whether it's Robert Kraft mobilizing to yeah. keep him or, or, or Josh McDaniels, frankly, realizing after meeting with Mark Davis, this isn't Robert Kraft. All due respect, that you know, the somewhere in between, some combination of the two could make McDaniel say, I, "I'm I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait a little bit longer." And once he realizes, you mentioned Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. Once he realizes there's a good chance there's also going to be Aaron Rodgers in the division, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe I wait one more year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.